Hey everybody, Sully Man here. Today we are going to hop into strokes and what are they? Uh, I don't know. So I don't even know why I'm recording this. I might as well. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, strokes are appearances that you place onto a path. It's just an appearance. Um, nothing crazy. Um, I want to start you off by making sure you have your stroke panel open. I already have mine, but you can head over to window and go down to strokes and make sure it's open. Mine's over here, stacked in here. I'll stretch this out. You can see it says stroke, and it has this little icon with three lines that uh, get incrementally thicker. So this is your stroke panel. You got the wave cap corner aligned, dashed lines, arrowheads. It's all kind of um, easy to figure out. Nothing too strenuous mentally. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and grab, uh, create, not grab, uh, three objects. I'm going to start with an ellipse and drop an ellipse down. Um, and you'll see that it's got a default coloring to it, which I will get into in the next video. Um, the default is a white fill with a black stroke. I'm going to go ahead and hit, hit Control and Shift and then D to turn off my background so you can see what's going on here. So as you can see, the inside or fill is white and then the outside has a black stroke. Um, and you can see in the stroke panel, it's got the, the weight of the stroke or thickness um, is one point. And you can see you can click the drop down and select you know, even thinner points uh, or thicker points. Um, I like to think weight as somebody's weight. You know, the, the more food you eat, the bigger you're going to get. So we can add weight and the line gets thicker. Um, here on the diet, we can knock it down back to one. Um, you'll see. And notice that once I get to one and hit down, it, the stroke disappears. It's kind of a default reaction, but uh, you can go even lower by typing in, uh, you know, 0 0.75, 0 0.5, 0 0.25, anything you want, you can kind of go type in there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and head back to one. I'm going to turn the background back on so you can see what's going on. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and turn off the fill. We don't need the fill right now. Um, second object, I'm going to use a line, the line tool to create a line. So I click from one point, drag out, and you'll see it stay straight the entire time. And uh, there's our line. I'm going to go ahead and use the pen tool now to create a nice custom path. You'll see that it's stroking that line as well. And then you can use, if you got an Intuos um, tablet, um, I highly advise, I'll break this down later, but you can use the brush tool. You can use it with your mouse as well, but you're not going to have as much control. Um, that's with my uh, uh, my mouse right there. And you'll see this one is set to one point with a specific look on it. This is a five point round brush. So this is a, a default 5.1 with a uniform line. You can see I can change this out. The tips will change. But right now I'm not going to get into that. We'll get into that into a later video. But that's a brush line. So I'm not going to be working with that in this video. Here's really your three major types. So we have a shape, a line, and then a pen tool line. And these are all strokes with a default one point weight. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select all three. I'm going to add uh, knock the weight up. Pretty simple. You'll notice that the line has a squared out edge. This one doesn't because it's a closed path. Um, but these two are open paths and they kind of abruptly end leaving a nice straight line. So you can now change the cap, and the cap is on the end. How you want to cap, think of it, putting a cap or hat on, on yourself. How do you want to finish up the your look? You could throw a cap on. So this one is the abrupt end at the anchor point. This one is a round end that extends after the anchor point, and this is an abrupt end that extends after the anchor point. So you can have three different types of cap. One that ends at the anchor point abruptly, one that ends after the anchor point with a nice smooth round edge, or you can have it end after the anchor point with a nice sharp abrupt end. Um, let's go ahead and move down to corner, and that's exactly what you think it is. Um, I haven't created a corner, so let's go ahead and do that. You know what? I'm not going to do it with the pen tool. I'm gonna just going to create a rectangle or box with uh, the rectangle tool. So you can see this has corner, nice sharp corner. Um, 
you can now use a beveled edge, which you'll see that kind of shades it off. Um, kind of like how stamps look. Uh, you'll see it doesn't do it to the inside edge. Um, I'm going to select it again. You can have a round corner or the default sharp corner. So you have three different corners that you can select. Um, let's see here. And then you have the way you align the stroke. And remember, the stroke is the appearance uh, that is added to a path, the path data. So uh, you can align the stroke in, in three different ways. Right now, you have the stroke that extends out to the left and right of the path, which is the default mode. You can have it extend to the inside of the path. So you can see here with this blue, the blue active path that the stroke, with the, the nine point weight that we set, the nine point weight extends to the inside of the shape. And you'll see with this, uh, it aligns to the outside. So I'm gonna go ahead and toggle between these two and you'll see that um, it's aligning on the inside or the outside of the path or your default, um, which basically splits nine points, you know, divides it in half to the left and right or inside and outside of this specific path. Um, so that's really the breakdown of capping, corners, and aligning the stroke, not to mention the weight. Um, you could also set the limit on these corners, um, you know, knock it down to one, and this is, this is, you know, it'll apply, make it look like, um, you know, this beveled edge, but you can set the limit that you want as well. So, let's go ahead and set that back to default. Uh, now, uh, let's hop into this uh, dashed line section. That's exactly, gonna, it's gonna do exactly what you think of it. Let's go ahead and hop on this circle, turn it into a dash line. Um, this these two buttons over here um, work with the align. And when you hover, um, this one will align to the corners. Can't see all too well, you can see that it shifted, but this is your default. This is the one I, I really don't stray far from this, but uh, on occasions you might wanna use this depending on how the dash line's aligning. Um, and you'll see it's either gonna start from the corner and just keep moving around till it ends on the corner or you can have them um, evenly distribute from the corner. This is usually my default. I don't mess with this one too too often. I mean, it's, it's, it's a nice look, uh, but that's where you would go to distribute the corner, uh, you know, distribute the dash along the corners or just have it, uh, you know, go normally as if you were drawing it, kind of guessing it. Um, okay, so with this dash line down here, the dialog, you're gonna see dash, gap, dash, gap, dash, gap. You can basically set how your dash looks. Right now, this one's set to, the dashes are 12 points long with a, with a uh, default gap. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but let's go ahead and set around. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that six to a 12. I mean, the 12 to a six, and then we'll go ahead and type six in, which will knock it down to a point. Um, that, you know, as I type for the gap, the gap's getting bigger. So it's a 50 point gap, 20 point gap with a nine point stroke. So I knock that down. Remember, it will affect, um, you know, the look of your, da your, your dash. So let's go ahead and hit a 20. You'll see that the dash gets thicker when I type that in. So you can go ahead and, and you know, if you want to get a little crazy with it, you'll see it's kind of messing with the way the dash looks. So we initially have a 20 point um, dash, or 20 gap, um, 25 point, and you'll see how it messes with the um, the way the dash line looks. Um, I'm gonna head over here, do the same thing. We'll just kind of keep it where it was at. You know what, I'm gonna knock this all to 20. Uh, and these are, th I like to think of the arrowheads as caps. You can go in and add uh, arrow caps. These are some of the default uh, arrow heads that you can use in Illustrator that they provide for you. They're pretty handy when you're looking to kind of you know, have an arrow pointing at something. If you want a dash line, um, 
you could set it on both ends, two different uh, types if you want. You know, if you don't want it looking like that, you can have, you know, create symbols and stuff like that out of it. Um, you can set the way these align as well and scale them up or scale them down. extending out from or staying on the inside of the path. So this one's you know, set to the outside. And then you can set the profile of the line, but we have it dashed at the moment. But you can see with that stroke, you can set just like up here. Remember, this is your quick options dialog up here, um, how your line looks. This will almost give it like a tapered look like the hand drew it. Um, it's a pretty good option to use if you're not using a Wacom and you kind of want to have that hand-drawn feel. Some of your strokes, you can see I can throw it over here. You know, give it that nice tapered look too. Now, what you can also do, and uh, on the newer versions of Illustrator, I remember back when you were able to use gradients, but uh, you can also set this to gradients. And I'll get into gradients a little more in depth uh, when we're coloring, but a uh, gradient basically um, you're using two colors that fade into each other, and you'll see when I turned on gradient, my gradient uh, panel popped out. Uh, you can see that I can set the color, the two colors, but uh, the default is white fading into black. You can see it gives a nice effect. So um, you do have those options um, when you're dealing with uh, strokes. You know, just a, fill, sh a straight color or a gradient that you can apply. Um, and you can change the, uh, the type of stroke gradient, how you want the color to align. You can see this one kind of, it's a, a linear fade from left to right through the entire stroke. This one is the start of the stroke has the white as it moves towards the end of the stroke into the black. Uh, and then you can use this one, which is more of the, um, almost like a uh, like pipe, a piping look to it. Uh, you'll notice that uh, it moves left to right through the entire stroke, whatever it is. So that's uh, that's just a quick overlook for gradients. Pretty simple stuff. You can change it to radial as well. Um, and you'll see how that kind of affects stuff. Uh, the radial moves from the center out in almost like a circle kind of look. Um, so that pretty much is the stroke panel and how to deal with strokes. Um, not nothing too crazy. I, again, as always, suggest to just go ahead and play around, grab some shapes and drop some lines down, um, and start messing with this stuff, you know, to get to know it. The, the more you mess with it, the better you're going to get, the more comfortable you are, the more confident you're going to be. Uh, I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys took something from this today. I'll see you in the next video, which should be coloring. Um, and as always, uh, if you can su it help support the channel by liking, sharing, commenting, or subscribing. Thank you again for watching.